Good morning, it's Matt Davis here again from the Shoreham site and uh, happy Wednesday to you. Uh, we're back in Colossians uh, today. Uh, earlier in the week, uh, I was uh, just expounding a little bit, giving a bit of background about the whole uh, epistle, the whole of Paul's epistle to the church in uh, Colossae. Just a short one, you can read it ever so quickly. I hope you've had a chance uh, to do that. And um, today there is uh, an opportunity just to dip into chapter three, the first chunk of chapter three in this letter. Uh, let me just warn you, um, if you're the kind of person that doesn't like being told what to do, and I dare I say that's probably lots of us, uh, then this could feel a bit painful because uh, Paul um, takes his gloves off in this particular section of scripture. It is very much a do this, uh, let this happen, uh, think this way, uh, operate that way. Uh, don't do that, but please um, do this uh, for the sake of the gospel and for the sake of your own spiritual health. It is very much a case of telling us as believers how to operate, how to live and how to relate to others in the church and outside of the church. It's titled, Put on the New Self, and um, we'll, we'll jump into it in a little second or two, but uh, this is Paul at his best, uh, speaking with great authority uh, in only the way that he knows how, uh, teaching a church uh, to, to lay solid foundations. This is the work of the apostle, and uh, you're just gonna love it. It's um, just a few short verses, so chapter three, verses 1 uh, to 17 and he starts off uh, with uh, something of a, a presupposition it's quite, I guess it's a question and a presupposition he says look if then you've been raised with Christ and of course all the readers are thinking well yes that's us that's us then he says this is what you do you seek the things that are above where where Christ is seated at the right hand of God uh, here we go. First imperative, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. And um, I've certainly been guilty in my most spiritual moments of thinking that this is what I do so brilliantly. I, I set my mind on spiritual things and, uh, and that's where I find uh, my peace with God, my influence, uh, my security uh, and I'm kidding myself because I'm not very good at setting my mind on the things that are above. But Paul says this, you've died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God, which um, you have to think for a second. Hang on. There's, there's a reality there that I'm not quite sure that I've grasped. Uh, when we baptise people, uh, in water, as we, hopefully we will be in a, in a couple of weeks' time, uh, we, we're kind of, it's, it's like a, a watery burial. Uh, we, we're, we're saying goodbye to the old way of life in a symbolic way. And as people come up out of the water, uh, they're, they're coming up um, in acknowledgement of a new life. Uh, not that they've uh, become Christians in that moment, but it's, it's a symbolic way of showing um, the watcher, those that are uh, observing a baptism, that actually what's happened is really significant. There's been a death, but there is new life. But there's work to do. And uh, this, I think, is a, often a challenging uh, point of contention when we study scripture. You know, how, what, what part do I play in this uh, in this uh, growth in my spiritual life? Is there work for me to do or does God do all of it? How does this work? Well, Paul's pretty clear. He says, put to death what is earthly in you. Wow, there's some work to do then. There's very much earthly stuff going on. And Paul, Paul calls it out. Sexual immor immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, all of those things, idolatry. And on account of these things, the wrath of God is coming. He doesn't pull any punches, does he? He says, look, uh, you were like this because that's how you used to live. He said, but now you've got to put them all away. And he calls them out again. He says, anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk. Put it all away. Don't lie to one another. But see to it that you have put the old self with its practices off. 
and you have put on the new self. There is, there is a genuine call to action. That's what's going on here. And this new self, there is an ongoing work. It's, it's, Paul says it's being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. He goes on to say in verse 12, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. So he's told us what to put off. Okay, we'll, we'll give that a go. Uh, now he's telling us what to put on. And again, he talks, he, call, he calls them out. Here we go. Compassionate hearts. How's that going to work for you today? Kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. Wow, there's some challenging stuff going on here. And, uh, you know, we, we've got to keep short accounts with each other. I was uh, with a brother the other day and he said he, he, he and his wife keep short accounts and they're, and they're really short. They have to discuss stuff with each other all the time uh, because they are constantly wanting uh, to be in good relationship. And that is how things get worked out. And above all of these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Let the, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. That's why you're listening to this devotion, right? Because you want uh, these devotions, this, this book, uh, to feed you, to, uh, to sit in you, so that you can draw from it. Hopefully you'll remember some of this as your day goes on. And that's, that's what it means to allow the word of God to, to dwell in your hearts richly, so that you can draw from it, uh, so that you can be strengthened from it and it says when we together sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs even through a face mask you can do that <laughs> with thankfulness in your hearts to god and whatever you do in word or deed do it ever do everything in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him that's kind of us done this morning that's short and sweet but massively powerful so there's a whole bunch of things to put off. Paul's really clear about those. And then there's a bunch of things to put on. How are we going to get on with that today? Uh, let me just encourage you to, to ask God for help. I need to ask him for help. And I'm going to pray for us right now in order that he might fill us, strengthen us to do those huge things as we seek to grow in our knowledge of Jesus. Lord, thank you uh, that uh, we have your word uh, as a lamp to our feet. Thank you, God, that uh, the, the enduring words of the Apostle Paul, just instructing us uh, robustly to put things in our lives that aren't right off, to put them off and to put on those things uh, that are found in your image, Lord. And so we just say we need your help. We need the help of your Holy Spirit uh, to make us alive in you, to strengthen us for this challenge ahead Lord, I pray for all my dear brothers and sisters who are watching this, Lord, that, that we would know uh, the resurrection power of Jesus in us to get this job done. Lord, we, we need your power, we need your strength, and we need your love. Amen. Have a super day.